Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you how to create and run a for loop, a while loop, if then else, and switch case otherwise or default in Simulink. So if you use MATLAB, you clearly know how to do that in MATLAB code, but in Simulink, there are blocks under subsystems and ports. So if you go to the library, and then go under the simulink and then subsystem and ports that's where you can find these blocks and subsystems right so here we go and for instance if you go down here you should be able to find the while iterator subsystem this one right which is what we are using over here and then there is one for four, there is one for switch case. Now switch needs two blocks. One is the switch case subsystem and the other one is for each one of the cases, you need one of these blocks called switch case action subsystem. So this is the action one. This is the one that basically checks the logical condition. And the same thing goes for if, right? So this is if, this is the case for it, this is for else, and if you want to add if else's, then you have to add more of these blocks here. And there is a similar one for four. So let's talk about how to uh, program this. So this is the for loop. So inside the for loop, when you uh, basically uh, bring that subsystem, there are three things by default. There is one of these outports, there is one import, and there is one of these guys, which is the for iterator block. Now, the major thing is this one, for iterator. This is one that determines the number of basically uh, loop counters, right? So here you go from I of one to 10,000, right? And not only when you put this inside these uh, subsystem, anything inside the subsystem will be repeated, will be uh, executed for those many iterations. Also, if you want the iteration uh, counter, right, the I that goes from 1 to 10,000 to be an output of this block, you basically check this icon, right? So show iteration variable and send it out as an integer with 32 bits. OK, so if you want to use that, then this one will also send you uh, that value. Good. So here and it has some other options. I don't want to uh, spend a lot of time in that. But you see iteration limit source is internal. So here this number is typed directly in. If I want to bring that number 10,000 from another block, I can make it external. Then it will have an input port. And that's where I pass that 10,000 as a constant or result of some other calculations into it. And then the states, when you start, do you want to hold them? Do you want to reset them or anything? Here you say they are being held. Okay. So what is this one doing? This simple subsystem that I wrote here. I have a random number generator from a Gaussian distribution with a mean of zero and variance of one. And you have to leave the sample time as negative one. So what am I doing? I'm generating a random number from this distribution and then I'm using this memory block. So what am I doing? First, I'm generating one number. I'm passing it in to a sum and I get this number, whatever it is, the sum, let's call this sum at iteration, let's say at time t. When you pass it to the memory block, it's going to keep the previous value. So this is going to be sum of t minus 1. And this is that random number n, whatever you want to call it. So what am I doing here? I have sum of t equals sum t minus 1 plus n, right? So if I want to add some annotation here, right? Sum at t equals sum at t minus 1 plus n. And this is basically the recursive formula that I'm applying here, right? You see that? So this way, each time I'm generating a random number, I'm passing it to the sum. And so basically this sum will be sum of 
10,000 random numbers that will ultimately come out of here. And uh, of course, it gets updated over time. And then it will be divided by the loop counter. So this is like II. So this is going to be like sum at T divided by II. So ultimately, when 10,000 numbers are generated, the output after all the updates will be sum of 10,000 random numbers from a Gaussian distribution with a mean of zero divided by 10,000. So basically, this is the average, right? This is the average of the numbers that have been generated so far. And what should the output be? Well, if the numbers coming from a Gaussian distribution with mean of zero, then as you make the number of random variables more and more and more, then this average should really converge to the mean of the distribution, which is zero. So the more numbers you generate, the output should converge really to number zero. Is it the case here? ran this uh, for loop for 10,000 iterations and you see the number is very close to zero so yes it is correct next we go to the while loop so here is a while loop and if we go inside the while loop I'm doing very similar thing here so there is the while iterator block and I can put the maximum iteration on it or if you don't like a maximum iteration you can put a logical condition there now here I'm doing a simple thing. I'm just uh, looking at the loop counter. So you see I'm sending out the loop counter by checking this item. And this is the loop counter and I'm sending it back and comparing it against this maximum loop counter. But again, remember as long as this condition is a one, is a true, the while loop will go on. Then you might say, well, what should I do with this maximum number of iterations? If I have to check a logical condition, not a maximum iteration, then as you can see here, you have to use a negative one. So if I use a negative one, then it doesn't count the loop counter, just looks at what? Looks at uh, the uh, logical condition that goes there. So you can, for instance, count this I, right? Instead of this, you can count this or go and do something. And then, finally, uh, whenever that condition is false, it will stop. Okay, so here it's very simple. Now, of course, you know, while loop needs the loop counter to start, right? So here you see the initial condition IC is passed and it was coming from a constant of 1. So I have to start the loop counter. Now, this one will send out the loop counter port, right? And um, since this one also keeps track of the number of iterations, that II will automatically increase by one each time. Okay, so it kind of acts something similar to a for loop in this part, but this one can take any logical condition. Now, what am I doing? I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm generating random numbers, add them together, and then divide them by the total to get the average. And you see that I got the average close to zero. And you might say, uh, are these two supposed to be the same? The answer is yes, because the same random block here is using the same seed. So now I go ahead and change the seed here to one in this four iterator uh, subsystem instead of one. And here you see I write it again and you see the numbers are different. You see? So, of course, if you use the same seed, you're going to get repeated random numbers, the same random numbers. So, make sure if you want different results, use a different seed in those random numbers. Okay, so for loop and while loop. Now, we go for if, else, if, else. Now, for that, you need to create the, or bring this block, which is called if subsystem. So, if you bring it in, you see it has the number of inputs, one. So basically, this is the variable based on which you decide. And it could be a, a variable that you compare against something. For instance, if this u1 is bigger than 0, do something else, which is negative or equal 0, do something else, right? Yep. And here you see I have no expression for else if. But if I wanted, I could do that with comma separated list, correct? 
So here, what am I doing in this if else? I'm counting the number of positive and negative random numbers generated. So basically, again, I'm using this random number block and let's use a different seed this time, maybe 10. By the way, how big can I go on this seed? It's up to um, 2 to 32. 2 to the 30. Uh, 2 minus 1, basically. You can go up to that, any positive integer number from basically uh, 0 to that number. Uh, that could be your seed. So let's say here 10 to just to generate different numbers. And then what? I generate these random numbers and I use a sample time of negative one. So the sample time of Simulink will determine that. And then I compare that generated number against zero. If it's bigger than zero, I call it positive and I count it. If it's negative or less than zero, I call it negative. Now here is very, very unlikely that the number generated will be perfectly zero. So I use negative or equal zero as negative, okay? And here you see there is no else if. There is only if and else because I have not provided any expression. But if I, if I wanted an else if, I can say now u1 equals zero. And now if I apply that, you see, now I have if, else, if, and else. So I can count the zeros and have a separate if action subsystem for it and say that, hey, these many zero numbers were generated, that they were not positive, they were not negative. But again, since it's very unlikely here, I just got rid of that and made it a simple if else. Okay, that? Now, what do I have inside each one of them? It's just a counting system. That's all it is. I'm starting at one and each time I'm adding one more to it that I'm detecting another one. And then what? Another thing I want to show you is string manipulations. I wanted to, as a bonus, I wanted to show you how to uh, create strings inside Simulink. So here I generate that uh, integer, right? Which is the number of positive things. And you see also inside that if action subsystem, you also have this action port, which you don't need to really do anything, but it has to be in there. So whenever it receives a one, right, whenever this system receives a one, then uh, this uh, all blocks inside this will be executed. So this one keeps uh, counting the number of positive integers, convert it to string block so that 2, 10, 27, whatever it is, which will be converted to strings. So now this is going to be string 27. And then I will have these positive numbers with a space behind it. This is a constant string. It's not going to change. That one will change. So this is num to string command. And then I will use the concatenation block. So it is going to be 27, 24 positive numbers. And this concatenation will send it out to the display to show you that beautiful thing. You see? So in my display, instead of just showing 27, I'm showing you this beautiful string, 27 positive numbers. Or I can say positive numbers generated. And I do a very similar thing for negative ones. So you see, I can do string manipulation. Where are these string blocks? Again, they are under uh, Simulink. So if you go under Simulink, there is this tab added for strings and you can do all sorts of string manipulations. So the ones I use is this string constant and then two string, this one, and then string concatenation, which is this one. But there are lots of other commands that you can see. I can count strings. I can basically do find, I can do length, I can convert the string to numbers, do start and end, can uh, basically compare them. And there are all sorts of beautiful things. I can work with ASCII to convert them to strings and backwards. So there are lots of beautiful commands for string manipulations. And this is how I did it with if else. And finally, the last one is a switch case, otherwise or default. And here, this time I'm using this new block called random integers. So not only you can create random numbers from a Gaussian distribution, 
between uh, basically negative three point something to positive three, right? With a mean of zero and variance of one. If you want to change the range, change this variance. If you want to shift the average of it, change the mean. So this one, I create random integers, random i command. And uh, the numbers will be from zero to this number minus one. So if this is four, I will generate randoms from zero to three and integers. So, and the format of them I picked as uint8. You can pick any other format that you want. So these numbers this time is gonna be zero, one, two, and three. Now here I have a bunch of different cases and my cases are one, two, and three. You see, I did not even consider zero. I really, it's a good idea to count also zeros. And then you want to show a default case or not. So if you want, you can get rid of the default case. So here, since this is not gonna generate anything other than zero, one, two, three, maybe you get rid of that default case. And there we go. So now instead of doing a termination on this, I need to basically extend this case, right? So I need to get one of these. I need to get one of these. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And here we go. This goes here. And now it should be zeros, one, two, threes. Now I have to go inside here and change. So this is going to be the zeros, not the ones. And again, you see the counting system here. So that is going to be the zeros. This is going to be the one. And I modified the other ones as well. And then again, I brought back the default case or otherwise case and terminated it again. It's not going to count anything, but this is basically the switch case. Now in the switch case, uh, you have to put your conditions inside braces, curly braces, and each case will be its own separate bracket. So case of zero, case of one, case of two, case of three. Now, if a case is a combined case, for instance, one case is that the number generated is zero, one is one, one is two or three, then for that two or three, you put two and three inside the bracket. So now there is one case that is one. There is another case, which is either two or three. So you can basically combine conditions by putting them in bracket. And you see here, out of the number generated, I had nine threes, 13 twos, 15 ones, and 14 zeros. And of course here, uh, you have a source of initial seed. Now this is auto, if you want, you can do a parameter and you can change the seed. So if you have other blocks similar to this, you get different numbers as well. Okay, so for loop, while loop, if else, if else, and finally what, switch case otherwise. This is how we do them in Simulink, hopefully, as well as of course, string manipulations that I showed you. Hopefully this video was useful to you and I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you.